Hi, and welcome to Leash Time. Today, I'm going to give a demonstration of the Leash Time scheduling and billing system for professional pet sitters. We're looking at the home page of Leash Time. It's the first place you will come to after you log into the system. The home page is divided into three sections. Customer requests, which are things like schedule requests by clients, cancellation requests, credit card updates. There are a wide variety of requests that can come into the customer request section. The second section is daily service visits. This is a list of all of the visits that the business has for this particular day. And we'll see that the date is here, 8-3-2011. The third section is incomplete visits. This is a list of all of the visits that have not been co confirmed complete, either by the sitter or by the owner manager of this particular business. Let's open up customer requests first. We'll see that there are 12 unresolved requests. You, you can see that there are a variety of request types. Uh, in one case, somebody is updating their e-checking or ACH information. In another case, another client is requesting a change to their profile. Uh, in another case, the client is requesting a schedule. And in another case, a prospect is requesting more information from this particular business. This is a pretty good representation of the types of requests that come in here. You can actually open up any of these requests by clicking on the request type. So if we click on Profile Change for Elroy Crumb and we expand it, we can see that the, this particular client is asking for changes to their pet profile. You can see up here we have several fields that identify this client and their contact information and we also have client flags up here which describe certain aspects about this client um, that are unique. So for instance this star means that this client is a valued client. This red cross means the pets perhaps have special health needs. So you can actually, that's one of the uh, very interesting features about Leash Time is that you can actually apply these, these flags, these graphical icons to clients and client profiles so you could quickly determine what the, what the major needs are for that particular client. If we're satisfied with the changes that are being requested, we can go ahead and click on Make Changes and it will update the profile for Elroy Crumb. It disappears from our list of customer requests and if we have leash time configured to send a confirmation email, we can send a confirmation email back to the client saying We've, we have approved your profile change request. Other types of requests are reminders um, or schedule request. If we click on that, we can see that this client, Ted Pasco, is requesting a series of visits from the 25th to the 29th of July. We can, we can actually go ahead and click to create that schedule automatically in Leash Time, confirm it with the client, um, and have it show up in the client's account login on their calendar view. We'll be taking a look at a client login um, later on in the demonstration, but this gives you an idea of what they can actually send in. The next section is the daily service requests. The daily service request lists all of the appointments that this particular business has to do for this particular day. And we'll see that the date that we're looking at is 8-3. It's also down here. If you want to look at another date, you can actually use these uh, arrow keys to go to another date in the future or to one in the past and Leash Time will update what the schedules are or, or have been for any particular date. You can also use the calendar widget to pick a specific date and have Leash Time show you what visits are required to be done on a future date. Let's go back to today. So we're looking at today. We have a total of 34 visits. The visits are sorted by sitter. The first sitter is always unassigned visits. These are visits that you probably want to take care of reassigning as soon as possible. The next sitter is Ben Ball. 
and these are the clients that he has to service for, for today. You can see that there is uh, some pertinent client information and service information. He's doing a dog walk at 11.25 for uh, John. He's doing um, uh, an, another dog walk for um, uh, Jelly Bean at 3 o'clock. Okay, so let's take care of these uh, unassigned visits first. There are two ways to reassign these visits to another sitter. One is to click on the service name, go to the sitter drop-down, and pick another sitter to assign this to. You'll see that the sitter drop-down option sorts the list of sitters. It sorts it first by sitters who have provided service to this client in the past, Ben, Beth, Dean, and Holly, then by, client, by sitters who are closest geographically by zip code to this particular client, and then the rest of the sitters that are available. So we'll pick one of the past sitters and we'll give this to Beth. We click on Beth and we click Done. It's going to disappear from the unassigned visits list and it's going to show up in Beth's list of visits. The other way to reassign visits is to click on the Reassign Visits button next to a particular sitter. If we do that, we go to a visit editor. What we're doing here is we're going to drag and drop the unassigned visits to another sitter. You don't have to do it just from unassigned. You can pick another sitter and reassign their visits as well. We'll stick with unassigned and we're going to pick a sitter to reassign the jobs to or we can pick multiple sitters uh, since one sitter may not be able to do all of these particular visits. So let's pick um, Erica and she, we see what her schedule currently is. She's got four visits and, and some office hours. Maybe we don't we don't want to reassign this to her because she's going to be preoccupied in the office with a big project. So we'll go and pick Jeff and see what his schedule looks like. It's clear. So we can just drag and drop the visits that we want to assign to this sitter. So we're going to, we're going to give him about four visits, maybe five visits. And Jeff's plate is pretty full. We're going to now find another sitter to assign the remaining visit. So let's pick Hugh, and he's also pretty clear. So he's going to get a couple of visits. And we'll pick uh, Robin, and we'll give her the remaining visits. So now we've reassigned all of the unassigned visits. Hopefully our day has been taken care of here. We can see a summary of where we reassign those visits to. Some of them went to Robin, some of them went to Jeff, some of them went to Hugh. If we're satisfied with all of the reassignments, we go back up to the top of the reassignment page and click on Make All Reassignments. When we do that, Leash Time will say all reassignments have been performed and ask you to confirm it, and we go OK. And if we go back to our home page, we'll see that there are no unassigned visits for today. We've taken care of all of those visits. Other things you can do when managing individual visits are to one click to cancel by clicking this red X and one click to uncancel by cr clicking the green arrow. So let's click that red X and look at this visit. So now there's a lot of things that have happened. One obviously is that the visit has turned red in background color. There's a, a strike through on the actual visit information. So this is the indicator that this visit has been canceled. The other things that are happening are uh, behind the scenes is that Leash Time is updating all of the accounting, account balance, and payment information regarding this particular visit. So the client's records or account records will be updated automatically when you do the one-click cancel. Additionally, it will be updated when you do the one-click uncancel. So Leash Time is taking care of a lot of the details behind the scenes for you, but it's a very simple one-click to cancel or uncancel. We've also seen that you can do some things um, to quick edit these visits. One of the things that we did was we reassigned a visit by clicking on the service name. But you can see that you can not only reassign the visit to another sitter, you can actually 
click to change the time window. So maybe they want to change the time from 11.25 to evening. Um, you can also change the service type. So if we want to change it from a dog walk, say, that's 30 minutes to a dog walk that's, say, um, 45 minutes, we can do so here. The thing about this is that when you, when you make these changes, leash time is going to automatically update the pricing charged to the customer and the pay paid to the sitter. We'll go ahead and change this to a 15-minute dog walk. So we've changed the time, and it's now at the bottom of our list. Remember, these visits are in chronological order. We've changed the time. We've changed the service. And we left the sitter the same. Other things that you can do on this home, home page daily service visit section is pull up a week at a glance view. This is a calendar-like view of the next week's worth of appointments that you have. So this gives you kind of a broader bird's eye view of your appointments. You'll see here that uh, we segment the days by morning, midday, afternoon, and evening. Depending on your particular business, you can confirm your morning to be defined as you know, 6 to 9 a.m., 7 to 10 a.m., uh, your midday to be uh, 11 to 3, 12 to 2, whatever it is that makes sense for your business and segmenting um, these times of day. It gives you a total revenue figure uh, for that particular day, and you'll see that there are multiple days here. Uh, week at a glance is really sort of a misnomer. You don't have to do a week at a glance. You can go up to the calendar widgets here, and you can, you can look at a longer time frame, a month, uh, a week, a day, a weekend. So you can play with these dates and look at, say, a weekend, and click on Show, and it will show you Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You can also minimize all the days and look at, look at them one at a time, so I, can, I, I minimized all the days, and now, now I want to look at Saturday. Once I'm done looking at Saturday, I may want to look at Sunday. So there's a lot of functionality here with the week at a glance view. We'll go ahead and close that down. You can also use the printed list button here to get a printer-friendly list of the visits for this particular day broken down by sitter. So this is something that is designed to be print it out nicely on a normal paper printer as opposed to electronically. The other thing that you can see here, and this is one of the things that really sets leash time apart, is that we've, we've got a robust key management system. It's really woven into the DNA of the system. You can see that we have key icons by certain visits for certain sitters. What that key icon is telling us is that this sitter does not have a key for this particular client. So we're going to need to make arrangements to get a key to that sitter. Things that we want to do to make those arrangements are we want to know where that key is. How many copies do we have? Um, who is it with? So leash time allows you to get that information very easily and to manage the whole process of storing, tracking, and reassigning those keys to the appropriate sitters. The key icon up here is a report, will generate a report that shows you all of the keys that you need over the next 14 days for sitters. A couple of other things to note here on the home page. Uh, Brian Griffith is one of the sitters. He has scheduled time off for today. He can schedule time off for the entire day or particular um, hours of particular days. Leash time is going to automatically unassign all visits that he has during his time off periods. Additionally, leash time will not allow you to assign him a visit that is supposed to take place at a time that conflicts with his time off. So leash time is helping you manage uh, sitter schedules and when they are available. And if they're not available, it's going to notify you and let you know we can't assign this visit to Brian Griffith because he's not available today. And if he had anything scheduled previously, they would have gone to unassigned. Probably a number of those visits that we had that were unassigned were from Brian Griffith. 
Okay, let's go to clients, new client. We're going to create a brand new client profile and walk through, you know, kind of the life cycle of creating a client, creating a schedule for a client, sending out a, a, an invoice, and processing a payment. So we go up to our main menu, clients, new client. We're looking at a new client profile. It's a profile that has not been filled out yet. All we need in leash time to fill out a profile is a first and a last name. So let's type in um, George Washington. And we'll click Save New Client, and we have a client profile. Many of the fields are not filled out. Um, we can fill them in later but all we need is a first and a last name to establish a profile. You can see that this cl pro client profile has multiple sections to it. We're looking at the basic info, which is where we put the first and last name, but it also has an address, pets, home info, emergency contact information, custom fields, list of services and schedules, uh, billing information, uh, account information, and a communication tab. So each of these is represented, each of the sections in the client profile is represented by a tab. When you look up a client or you're looking at a client's profile, you can easily switch among the tabs by just doing a click. It's very quick and very easy to go from section to section in a client profile. Uh, you can update one section, so let's give George Washington a sample pet. Uh, let's call it Fido and we'll say that it's a dog and it's male. We won't fill out the remaining fields, but you can see there are several other standard fields. And then there are also custom fields that you can set up for this particular um, business. So there are two sets of custom fields. One is for pets, which is part of a client's profile, and then one is for the entire client profile. So in terms of setting up the custom fields, you're going to want to figure out which ones are appropriate and applicable to the entire client um, if they maybe own multiple pets uh, and what's applicable to each of the individual pets. Okay, so we've, we've actually navigated to a couple of other different sections here um, and we have not saved our pet information yet. In most of the sections, you'll have a Save Changes button. That, saves the, that resaves the entire client profile. You want to make sure that you do that um, as you change things in the client's profile. Don't forget to, to click Save Changes. Just because you click to another tab does not mean the changes are saved. You've got to make sure you click on the Save Changes for those changes to be um, saved. Okay, so we've got a name. We've got a pet. Let's set up some services. Let's say that George Washington is one of our regular recurring clients. So what that means in leash time is that this client gets service on a regular basis. Say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, midday, uh, George Washington gets a standard dog walk. Um, this is in, in contrast to what we call a pet sit client. A pet sit client is somebody that gets service not on a regular basis. So this would be somebody that would go away for the weekend or somebody who would sporadically, um, you know, only, only get service during the holidays. They have a definite start and end date to the services that they have, as opposed to a recurring client who does not have an end date. Their schedules go on in perpetuity. And Leash Time has a recurring services schedule editor. In order to set up a recurring service for this client, George Washington, we would go to the Services tab, and then we go to the New Ongoing Per Visit Schedule button here. So we'll click that button, and we're going to set the parameters of what this service will entail. Let's set a start date. Let's set it for the middle of the month here, 15th. And let's choose the days of the week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, done. And our midday walk, we might be okay with 11.30 to 2.30, our standardly defined midday, or we might want to change it a little bit 
maybe we really want to call it 1 to 3 p.m. So we click the new time window label, and 1 to 3 p.m. shows up in the time of day. So it's going to be a walk Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 to 3 p.m. If we need a more precise time, we can actually pick a precise time, maybe 1.30 to 2.30. So we've set it for 1.30 to 2.30, and then we have to pick a service type, and we're going to pick a standard dog walk. And we're going to assign it to a sitter. Let's pick Bill. So we've gotten everything that we need to set up a recurring service. If this service never changes, meaning the client doesn't cancel, the client doesn't change their pattern or time of day that they want their service on a regular basis, we'll never have to come back in here and edit it. Leash time will continue to generate appointments in perpetuity. So we save the schedule and we see we're still back in the client's profile, the services tab, and now we see that the, the, the visits have actually been scheduled. And you can see that there, you know, the basic visit information, the sitter, uh, the date, time window, type of service, and charge to client and pet are all listed here for a particular day. Now, the other thing that Leash Time's doing in this list of visits is it's telling you that Bill, the sitter, over here does not have a key. So we're going to want to tell Leash Time that we actually do have keys for this client. And we're going to go over to the Home Info tab, and we're going to tell Leash Time that we have two copies of the key. We have a backup copy in our Alexandria office, and then we have one with the sitter, Bill. We go ahead and save those changes, and go back to our Services tab, and we see that the no key link is gone. So now Leash Time believes that Bill has a key, as we've told it. You can also see a summary of this service schedule. Remember, this is a schedule which then generates these appointments up here according to whatever the schedule pattern is. So. Now that we've set up the schedule, we're going to want to go ahead and invoice this client. Let's say we want to invoice this client today for the remainder of August, or for the, let's say the entire month of August. We would first go over and make sure that we've got all the visits for August by clicking the quick link up in the upper right-hand corner here for the, the month that we want to invoice and view visits for. We click August, and we do have all the visits there. We started on the 15th. We'll then go up to the left-hand corner of this Services tab and click the envelope with the dollar icon in it. What this is going to do is it's going to generate a statement. This is an invoice statement that we send out to the client or can send out to the client that itemizes all of the visits, the charge for those visits, and the, to the total amount due for those visits. Brings it up here and says there's $160 in current charges, no taxes, there are no prior charges, uh, no payments have been recorded, so the net amount due is $160. And we'll go ahead and email this to the client, and I'll just put in my email address. And we can customize the message that we want to send. Um, Welcome to Dog's Life, and that's the name of the sample business here. Uh, sincerely dog's life staff. You can actually create a template that automatically comes into this composer window as opposed to typing a custom message every single time. We'll just go ahead and click send message and it'll send it out to my email account. It'll send a statement as we saw before. So let's say that we receive a payment from the client and the amount due was $160. We go over to the client's, remember we're still in the client profile, we go over to the client's account tab and we say, we click on the make payment button. We're recording a payment for $160 and it's check number 1000. We click save payment 
and now the client has a $160 credit on their account. What's going to happen with these credits is that they're going to be applied against the services, which we're going to switch back over to the services tab, against these services as they're marked complete. It's important in leash time to mark visits complete. That triggers credits being applied to visit charges and commission state, commissions being paid to sitters. So we'll go ahead and mark these visits complete one at a time. And I want you to see what happens to the account balance as I mark visits complete. So we're going to go ahead and mark this one complete and update visit. The account balance goes down to $140. If I mark another visit complete, the account balance goes down to $120. If I mark another one complete, it's going to keep going down in increments of $20 because that's what all of our service charges are. We'll go ahead and mark a couple more complete and get this account balance down to about $60 here. Okay, so the client has been fulfilled with a handful of services. We've sent out a statement prior to delivering those services for $160, we've received payment. Now the client calls up and says they want to cancel the last three visits in August. And they do it within you know, the uh, appropriate time frame for penalties and such. And you go ahead and click on cancel, cancel. and cancel. Okay, so we've canceled those last three visits in August. Now the client basically has overpaid for August. They still have a $60 credit. And this is a recurring client. If we go out to September by clicking on the September link here, we see that they have uh, additional services scheduled and let's sort of fast forward to the beginning of September and we're going to pre-bill them for that month. We've taken the first step which is clicking September. We're going to click the envelope with the dollar symbol icon to generate a new statement for September. And we see that we have visits in September itemized, total of $260 worth of visits that we're going to be billing for. If we go back up to the top, we see that our current charges are $260. There are no prior charges. But look here, there's a $60 payment and credit that can be applied to these $260 worth of charges. That's because the client overpaid in August, as it turned out, because of the cancellations, and is now getting billed for September. So basically the point here is that leash time is carrying those credits forward for you automatically into the next billing period and coming up with a new net amount due. So you don't have to do anything like transferring those credits from one work order to another. Um, there are a couple of other things to note here with the client profile. One is we can set up um, flags to apply to a custom profile, uh, to a client profile. Remember, we saw those flags when we pulled up one of those visit requests or client requests. You would click right next to the client name, the link that says click to enter flags. Now, we've predefined some flags in this particular database. We've shown a dog with a growling face. Uh, we've chosen a dog with a growling face image to indicate that this is a danger client or that this, this client has an aggressive dog. And we've, we've made this image private so it won't show up on a visit sheet and the client won't see it. So we um, click on the checkbox check check box to apply it to this particular client. So we're gonna, we know this client has a, an aggressive dog. Dog will, and we put a note in here, dog will bite uh, your leg if you let it, okay? And then we also know that the client is a very valued client. Uh, they will pay anything 
to care to look after uh, their dog, which is aggressive. So this client is sort of desperate, um, and they, you know, sort of need a lot of attention. And so we've we've created a couple of flags here, and we'll skip through the other ones, and we'll go ahead and click Save Changes, and we see those images show up here. And if we hover over those images, we can see the note that is applicable for this particular client and for this particular flag. So when we come into this client profile, we'll see immediately what some of the key issues are regarding this client. And we can hover over to get a little bit more detail. Rather than having to go through the entire client profile, looking at various notes, there's a lot of information in a particular client profile. And this is just a, a convenient way of conveying that information. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take a look at sitters. Let's start by looking at sitters, sitter list. We have a list of sitters that are part of our available staff. The sitters with the mask icon, the yellow mask icon, have login set up. So we can actually log in as a particular sitter. So we're, we're acting in the role of a manager owner, and we have been this entire time. But we may want to log into a particular sitter's account to see what they see. Maybe they have a question or an issue or they're having a problem, and you want to be able to sort of see what they see. So we're going to pick Jeff Hall as Howell, I'm sorry, as somebody that we want to log in for. We see that there's no mask, which means that he does not have a login set up presently. So I'm going to go ahead and click on his name to edit his profile. And I'm going to click on, we're in the basic info tab of his profile. And you can see that the profile is broken down, much like the client's profile, into separate tabs. I'm going to go ahead and set a sitter, lo sitter login for him, and I will call it Jeff789, um, and I'll set a password for him, and I will confirm it. Okay, and we'll save that login for Jeff. And then we'll go back out to our sitter list, and we'll be able to log in as Jeff from the manager account. Okay? And we see what Jeff sees. This is what your sitter would see when they logged into leash time. So we see that, you know, here are a list of visits that Jeff has to do for today. Um, some some information, some of them have been reassigned from Brian Griffith. So these are not these are visits that have not normally been on his schedule. And we see that he basically needs keys for all of these visits. Again, the key icon indicator telling Jeff that for these clients on this date, you need, the, you need a, keys for them. At the top of the page here, it's also giving a summary of the keys that he needs in the future, or a list of clients for which he needs keys in the future. Uh, Jeff can play with the date range here. He can maybe look at his schedule for the entire week. He puts an end date in there and clicks Show. Um, and he does not appear to have any visits for the remainder of the week. Let's see if let's see what he has for the remainder of the month. Okay, nothing. Um, so we're going to go ahead and view the visit sheet summary for today. We'll confer, confirm it. So we click on the visit sheet summary, and we see uh, a list of visits that he has to do, the times he has to do them for, and then the client IDs. This is an option setting, uh, depending on what sort of security level you want. Uh, in this business, we've set it so that client ID show up instead of client names. He can also print out a detailed visit sheet, which not only has the summary, but he, it, but it also has up at the top here, but it also has the detailed profile information for the clients that he needs to service: Burt Barrington, Winston Barrario. Uh, and Bilbo Baggins Wizard. Um, there's not a whole lot of information here, but you can get a feel for all of the 
fields that we cover and will place into a visit sheet. Uh, that includes custom fields that have been filled out, both the pet custom fields and the client profile custom fields. When Jeff is done with his schedule or done servicing these clients, he'll come over to schedule, he'll log back in and go to schedule and mark visits completed. And he'll, there's only one visit that he could mark complete that he could have done already, the 9 to 11 a.m. As the other visits, time windows uh, come and, or begin, uh, Jeff will be able to mark those complete. In this case, we're going to just go ahead and mark this one complete. We'll go ahead and check all visits complete. So if there was more than one visit, we'd be able to select them all and then go mark all check visits complete. Now that will do several things. Um, that's going to update the billing information for the client. So it'll update account balances. It will update application of credits. Um, that's a completed visit as confirmed by the sitter. It will also update the amount payable to this particular sitter. So we'll go ahead and mark that visit complete and it disappears and Jeff doesn't have anything to mark complete yet. Jeff can also view a list of clients that he is either the primary for or is providing services for. So he doesn't see an entire list of the clients, he just sees the clients that are relevant to him at any given point in time. Uh, Jeff is able to make a request to the manager, and this will be the first request that we actually create and send in, um, to update a client profile. So he clicks on the client name, and he says um, he wants to put a note in there. Uh, make sure you turn off the faucets when you leave. Uh, maybe he wants to update some other information as well. He wants to tell us that the trash location is in the kitchen. And he submits this change request. So Jeff has made a request on behalf of this client. It doesn't automatically update the client's profile. It first goes to the manager, and we'll see where the manager sees it, for them to approve. So the manager has to approve that change before it's actually made to the real client profile in the database. So we'll go ahead and close this out. And we'll go back to the manager's account. So we exit out of the sitter's account. There is one other way that sitters can access their visit schedules. And I'm going to show you that on a mobile device. So this is an iPhone simulator. We do have a mobile version of Leash Time available for sitters. So again, they'd be able to pull up uh, all the visits that they needed to do. We're logged in as uh, Beth uh, in this one. Uh, they'll be able to mark the visits complete by clicking, uh, by tapping the uh, green check mark here. So we go ahead and click that. Uh, it's going to ask if we can use your, uh, use the sitter's GPS location to record uh, the, the actual address where they marked it complete. Um, and we go ahead and confirm, yes, you can use those GPS coordinates, and then we mark it complete. The visit changes color to green, indicating that it is complete. We can also view a client's detailed profile from here by, click, by tapping on the client name. It's going to require that we log in again because we've timed out, and this is a security measure that we take, all of the critical client information, including, say, garage codes, um, you know, pet names, address, all of that information is at a, at a, at a level below the list of, of visits that, that we saw initially. So in order to access that information, you will have to type in a password if you've had the phone idle for more than five minutes. So basically, if you lose your phone, after five minutes, uh, somebody who might pick it up won't be able to access that information without this additional password. So it's just an additional security layer. So we see for this client, Carmelo Baroni, that 
there's one walk scheduled for today at night from 9 to 11. We see the cell phone numbers, the home number, the work number. We're able to either uh, we're able to use the native phone capabilities to call this client directly or text them. Um, we see the pet information, the fact that it's been authorized for urgent veterinary care, um, and we see other information about this client if it's there. If it's not, then we don't we don't show the blank fields. So let's go back to our list of visits and we'll pick Elroy Crum this time. And we see Elroy Crum has a much fuller profile. Uh, Elroy Crum has a series of flags associated with this profile. Uh, he's got two visits. Um, he has multiple phone numbers, uh, multiple pets, and fairly detailed information about those pets. Uh, a vet contact, and he also has some detailed notes and pictures of those pets in his profile. So you can see that the sitter has very much the same functionality on a mobile device and we currently support iPhone and Android as they do when they log into their web uh, account. And they can do both if they want. They can log into their web account and they can log into the mobile device. Okay, let's see about how a sitter will get paid. So if, we, if we're, we're back in the manager view of the leash time system, we go to sitters, payroll commissions. This is where leash time calculates the amount payable to a sitter for a given period of time. So if you wanted to define your pay period as, say, July 1st, to August 2nd, what leash time is doing here is it's going through the visits and calculating the amounts due for the sitters. Most of the sitters don't have anything due, and Brian Griffith, Griffith is the only one. And if we pull, we, perhaps we've just completed a pay cycle, we click on Brian Griffith's $253, and we see that the total amount that he is due, to, due is itemized. The visits that make up the total amount that is due to Brian Griffith are itemized in the statement here. And it shows you how much he's due for the type of visit and for the client. So $9 for dog walks generally, $11 for a monthly contract dog walk, and back to $9 here. And that's all added up and a final figure is given to you and that's basically what you should put on a paycheck that you send to the to the sitter and this is a statement that you can uh, send to them as well the sitters do have access to these statements and the pay histories so let's just process a payment for Brian Griffith we could if we had more sitters who were getting paid we could select all and click on pay selected sitters and what this is going to do is leash time is going to take all of those visits that we saw in that statement and mark them as having been paid so when we go back and run a statement again for the next pay cycle those visits will have been considered paid and the new visits that have been completed will be tabulated to come up with a new amount to pay uh, Brian for that pay period so we'll go back to our sitters and sitter list and we'll go to Brian's profile and we'll go to pay history and show and we see that the payment date is 8-3 period ending 8-2 it's regular payment type if we click on regular we see the itemized statement again there's a little bit more information um, we see the total up here $253 was paid and then the itemized list of visits you might not have a check or transaction number, particularly if you use leash time to generate the amount due to the sitter, but use a payroll uh, service to actually create the checks or do the direct deposits for the sitter. Um, if you need to put that transaction or direct deposit number in here, uh, you can do so after the fact by clicking there. And let's say it's uh, 1003456. Okay. So maybe that's something we get back from uh, paychecks and we save it in there and it's part of the record now. 
and Brian has a similar capability on his uh, account. He can look at previous pay periods and previous statements in those pay periods. Okay, we're going to actually take a look at uh, client login and the experience they have when they log into the leash time system. So I'm going to drag over uh, a window that I had opened up previously that shows the client login. We've already typed in the login and password for, for this particular business, which is Dog's Life, our sample database. First thing you see is that there's a... Uh, service agreement or a contract that, this, that the client can actually click through and agree to by, by checking the box here saying I agree and proceed. Uh, okay, we're looking at a client account for a particular pet sitting business. Uh, this is what it looks like to the client. This is our sample business, Dog's Life, and so that's a logo that we had put in there, but uh, depending on how your logo looks and your color scheme and your sort of background images, uh, it's going to look very different than this. So each business that we work with would get their own sort of custom skin to the leash time client account capabilities. We'll see that there's a main menu up here. You can request visits. You can update your profile client can change their password, they can update their credit card information, um, contact you, review their account uh, history, and log out. Now, there are several configuration options. So for instance, you, if you don't accept credit cards, you would turn this off and the menu option would disappear. It doesn't make sense, obviously, to accept credit cards if uh, to have an option like this if you don't accept credit cards. So what we'll do here is we see that there's no visits scheduled from 8.3 to 9.17 and again the client has some date uh, widgets and can, can show visits for a particular date range. It defaults to about six weeks and so we're going to go ahead and request visits. The client is going to get visits starting on the 5th of August and ending on the 10th of August. So sets a start date and end date and says let's start with these dates. Oh, we get a notification here. Uh, and again, this is an option. This particular business has been set up so that you need to give at least three days notification uh, to have a schedule approved. So. We go, okay, we understand that. We'll go ahead and request the schedule anyways. We'll go ahead and click on Add a Service on Friday the 5th, and we'll pick Dog Walk, and we'll pick a time of day. We need a late afternoon dog walk, and we need it for Holly and Nico, our pets, and we go done. And then we're going to copy this to all days. So we need a late afternoon dog walk from the 5th to the 10th. And maybe we put a note in here um, please also uh, put food out for the dogs. We see that there's a uh, total price up here that's based on what this client's charges are for a dog walk. Clients, each of your clients can have a custom price for the same service. So this particular client, Ted Pasco, might have uh, might be charged $18 for a dog walk, while George Washington, who we had just set up, might be charged $22. Your standard price is $20. You can override the client pricing for each client. You can also override the sitter pay rate for each sitter. So this client's at, at $20 a walk. Maybe it's 15. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and preview the visits. That's the second step. So the client sees the visits in a calendar, sees how they lay out, and once they're satisfied with that, they'll go ahead and click Submit Request. And what this will do 
is it will generate a request item that will show up on that home page. Remember we saw that at the beginning of this presentation? And we'll go back and look at that as soon as we, um, as soon as we get wrapped up with this particular client. We're going to put another re request type in there, a profile change request, by clicking on the profile main menu option. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to get rid of this. This was clear out this testing data and unnamed, unnamed, and we'll clean this up a little bit and maybe put in that the leash location is in the back of the house. Um, by the hose. So we're updating a couple of pieces of the client profile. So this is the client who would come in here uh, and make their own change request to their own profile. Uh, they do have custom pet fields uh, available to, to modify medications uh, if they needed to convey it. Uh, maybe they want to add a photo of a pet. And let's go to uh, pet photos, pet photo one. Okay. And that's pretty good, pretty good amount of updating. And we're going to go ahead and submit this change request. And again, the profile will not be updated until the manager has had a chance to review and approve the changes. So we close this down. We're going to switch back to our manager view. And we're going to go back to the home page. Okay, we see those two requests that came in from Ted Pasco. He had a schedule request and a profile change request. And we're going to go ahead and handle these. So we click on schedule and we see the schedule that Ted Pasco has requested from the 5th to the 10th, a late afternoon dog walk, 3 to 5 p.m. And we see the note also up here. Please also put dog food out for the dogs. And we go create schedule. What this will do is, in the underlying leash time window, we've created what we call an easy schedule. This is the tool that you use to create pet sits. So pet sit is defined as something that has a definite start and a definite end date. And we see that those visits have actually been created here in leash time. Uh, they're not assigned to anybody yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on select all visits and the visits highlight with a red border. And we're going to go to our Pick Something to Do menu and reassign these visits to a sitter. And we see past sitters, and I think we'll give it to Brian. And you'll see these unassigns will change to Brian Griffith, with the exception of August 5th. Brian Griffith has time off, so the visit was not assigned to him. It was left unassigned. So we close that down, and we see here is our visit that could not be assigned to Brian because he has time off schedule. So we'll go ahead and modify this individual visit and pick somebody besides Brian, maybe Corey. And we save that visit. Okay, we see that uh, Corey is now providing the service on Friday the 5th. So this schedule is completed. We'll go ahead and save changes. And we may want to send out a confirmation to this client. Or a statement altogether. We, have, we saw how to send out a statement before. A statement being an invoice itemizing the cost of the visits and the total cost. Or we might want to send out a confirmation, which is essentially the visits listed in a calendar-like view for the client to review. We may also want to CC our sitters who are providing services uh, with a schedule of the services that are supposed to be done. Um, we'll go ahead and send this message out to both our both of the sitters, and we'll put an email in, in there for Corey and to our client. So we send the message out. A couple of things to note here. We set up and approve that schedule and you see there are no keys assigned. 
And this is exactly what we want to see. We've assigned this to sitters, and they, we see they don't have keys, and so we're, we're going to be informed well ahead of time that we need to arrange to get keys to those sitters prior to the visit starting. When we did send out that email to the client confirming the schedule, it is logged in our communication log. We're, leash time logs all of the communication that occur within leash time, including the client who made a request for a schedule, a request for a profile change, and any outbound email communication. Okay, we're going to switch back to the client view of leash time and we'll see, whereas before they did not have anything scheduled or showing on the schedule, their schedule that they've requested is here now. So we see there's a Friday, August 5th that's with Corey, Saturday with Brian, and on through to the 10th. When they view their visits in, in their account, the client, they can request cancellation and changes. So maybe the client decides they want to cancel this last visit because they're coming back from their trip early. So they would go cancel, and they're making a cancellation request and confirming. And so it has a cancellation pending. If we switch back to our manager view and go to our home page, to our request queue, we'll see this cancellation request come into the, into the request queue here. And so you can review it and you can confirm that you want to cancel that appointment. And you can send a confirmation email to the, to the client indicating that you have accepted the cancellation and it's confirmed. We also still have that pending profile change request. If we click on that, we'll see that there are several fields that have been updated. We got rid of some of the sample text that were in some of the fields there. Hello there, peoples. We added a photo. Um, and we've also removed some other fields that were in there from before. And we're going to go ahead and click on Make Changes. That's going to automatically update the client's profile. It's going to include the photo. It's going to uh, eliminate some of those fields or blank them out as requested by the client. And then we're going to confirm here that we've accepted their profile change request. Now, if we go over to Ted Pasco's profile, um, we're going to do a search for him. We haven't, we have yet to do a search in leash time. There's a powerful quick search tool at the, in the upper right hand section of leash time and you can really search from anywhere. You can type in the name of the client. As you start typing the client's name in, it will, the search tool will narrow the list of uh, available match results. So I can type in PAS and, that PAS, and that matches uniquely with Ted C. Pasco, which is the client. I could also search by pet name. So there's two Hollies, one of which is with Ted C. Pasco. Um, I can search by spouse name, phone number. Basically, you can virtually search by any client criteria, um, and it will, leash time will try to do the best it can to match the appropriate clients. So we're gonna, we'll, we'll use the pet match, and we go to Pasco's profile. And as I said before, when you do a search, you automatically come to the Services tab. And we're going to navigate over to Basic Info. And I don't believe we changed anything there. Address, we didn't change those. We did change Nico's profile and added a photo. And let's see here, we've cleared out some of the other fields. Leash location in the back of the house by the hose. And we see the cancellation uh, has been updated here. So the client had requested a cancellation for this visit on 810 and it is now in a canceled state. If we go back to the client's profile, we'll see that the visit on August 10th has been canceled. 
And actually, that pet photo that was uploaded by the client is now showing up as part of their um, home page. So we do, a, we do a slideshow of the photos that the client has. So there's, there's our pet. And then let's go back to the profile and we'll review that. And we see that uh, the image is there and the leash location is updated. Let's go back to our manager login or manager account and we're going to look at a couple of final things. One is the keys. There's a whole key menu option here and you can track where all of your keys are by going to keys, key location report and this is a list of all of the clients that you have in your leash time account. This is the, the client name uh, and these are the key ID, these are the keys that you have. Uh, each key is assigned by leash time a unique ID. This key is with Bill and this key is with Andy for client Jessica. Uh, if we look at client Casey Acevedo, we see that there are four keys for this client. Two are in the Alexandria office, so there's one, there's two. One is with Erica and another is with Brian. So this is a comprehensive report of where all your keys are. There are other key reports that are very useful. For instance, sitter keys. So for a particular sitter, you might want to know what keys they have and what keys they'll need. So let's pick Ben Ball. We see these are the keys that he has. These are the key IDs. The key hook is the internal location where you store your keys. So you may have hooks that you label one, two, three, four. Um, you just tell leash time what hook it's on or what drawer if you're using a drawer system. It's basically, it's an optional field that you can use to help uh, you keep track of where your keys are in your office. So for this particular key, it's on hook, key hook LK, uh, key ID 4-10. There are um, five copies with the client one copy in the Arlington office, two with sitter Ben Ball, one with John, and one with uh, Brian. Additionally, we can see what keys Brian is going to need for visits that are upcoming. And he can check those keys out from here. Uh, and then he would then have possession of those keys. So let's check, check out one of those keys. And now he has that key. The last thing I'm going to show you is uh, just really quickly uh, an overview of the reports in leash time. Uh, there are numerous reports in leash time. There are numerous revenue reports, sitter pay reports, there are tax liability reports, account balance reports, and some other useful reports, you know, who has credit cards on file, when are they expiring, who's going to need them, um, discount reports, uh, referral reports. There are a pretty robust set of reports in leash time. You can actually also uh, export your entire client database to an Excel file. So if you need to get all of the information about your client into another system or another environment, maybe some sort of Outlook, um, you have the ability to pull all of that information out. That uh, pretty much is the tour of leash time. Obviously there are numerous uh, options and uh, capabilities uh, that are in the system and there's a number of things that we're working on. Uh, and So thank you very much for your time and attention today um, and I'm going to take questions regarding leash time. Thanks again and I really appreciate your time.